today at the Tremont District Library. And this month, November, we are doing Grass Head and Sprout House. And we've done Newton and Fleming as our um, scientists that we've showcased for the month of September and October. And we're still working with STEM. And this is a scientist, or really he's a physician and botanist. So botanist means he does more with plants. Um, and his name is Matthias Lobel, and he was born in 1538 and died 1616. So he lived 404 years ago. Why are we learning about somebody that lived 404 years ago? Well, he was the first botanist or scientist to kind of just lay out the difference between the plants. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, we're going to talk about the difference between a monocot and a dicot. Basic simple things is the dicot has two cotyledons and the monocot has one. So what are the cotyledons? The cotyledons, you can kind of see them right inside this picture. They're the first um, leaves that kind of pop out of a plant. <clears throat> Some of the plants that you or food um, that you eat come from different types of plants. And so here's some examples of the dicots. Here is an apple, cherry, um, grape, peach uh, are your fruits, and then vegetables are radish, uh, broccoli, peppers, beans, and I kind of put tomato in the middle because is tomato a fruit or a vegetable? What do you think? All right, and the monocots are bananas, coconuts, pineapple, dates, are vegetables, onions, corn, uh, asparagus, and yams. So whenever you uh, look at your seeds that you got, you got grass seeds and you have radish seeds. Your grass is your monocot, your radish is your dicot. So watch when they grow the difference between the two plants. Okay. One more thing to talk about, about what's happening when we water our plants is called capillary action. Capillary action is the result of cohesion of water, which means it coming together and the adhesion of it, that of the water to the solid material around it. So adhesion means it likes to stick to the solid. Like if you ever watch water, it'll gravitate toward things. Um, that's adhesion. As plants release water from their leaves, kind of like this diagram here, this is uh, water evaporation or trans transpiration, uh, a void is created. So it kind of helps as the, it goes out of the plant as a vapor, it's pulling it in. So almost like a continuous suction. And so we'll kind of draw it. So this is my water. And this is, I want it to go in this leaf, okay? But how it gets there, it has to go through the stem and then into the roots, right? And that draws water up, is the capillary action. Okay. <laughs> things that you get to grow in your um, kit this week. You have your grass head. This is my old man grass head. He got a little dry, so he's a little wrinkled. And my freshly started, wonderful bright green lady here of grass head. So for your grass head out of your kit, you're going to need your bag of soil. Um, there is a two different arms that you can pick. Whichever one you wanna pick, go ahead and just cut out two. Um, you have your cup and you have, I don't need that, uh, a little puff ball. You can choose between a mustache, like my gentleman has, or lips for your ladies, googly eyes, a rubber band, and a bendy uh, pipe cleaner. So 
we'll just go over those supplies and we'll do our brass head first. So you are going to want to add some water to your soil because for the most part, your soil is very dry and we want it to go ahead and absorb some water before um, we start working with it. So just kind of pour in some water. Don't get too heavy. Move it around. Okay, so that is definitely moist enough. Okay, so next you're going to want to stretch out your hand hose sock. And see, I'm just kind of pulling it down my hand without pulling too hard where I'm gonna have any runs. The boys probably don't know what runs and pantyhoses are, but that means you don't want any extra holes in it because then the soil will fall out and we want all the soil, soil to fall, stay in to our grass or our sock. Okay, so now that I've got that stretched out, I've already poured my seeds into a cup here and make it easier. But if you have, since yours is in a bag, it'll pour right in, no problem. Okay, I'm keeping my graft seed at the bottom of my sock. I'm going to go ahead and start adding soil. This is where you might want to do it with a partner or have mom or dad help you out just to maybe if somebody can hold the sock and then the other person can pour in the soil. All right, once you get your soil in your sock, get it all together at the end and then start shaping your head. Make sure that your grass seed is not off to the side or at the same end as your opening. You want it on the bottom. Okay, there we go. All right, before I keep shaping it anymore, I'm going to wrap a rubber band around it. When you wrap your rubber band around, make sure that you have at least an inch, inch and a half tail. There's my head so far. Okay, since our grass head we want to keep moist, um, you can try to use liquid glue if you don't have hot glue. I would suggest doing hot glue though because it's gonna hold a lot better with the amount of moisture that your grass head is going to be involved in. So, got my hot glue gun warmed up. I'm gonna glue on my googly eyes. For my girl, I had construction paper and I made eyelashes. And then I'm gonna glue on the nose and I'm gonna do another dot. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the mustache too. I think so far, look like a fun guy. All right, and then your pipe cleaner, you can make a bow for a girl's hair, you can make glasses. Or for this guy, since I already made glasses and a hair bow, I'm going to make a bow tie. All right, since we're doing all of our gluing, I'm gonna go ahead and glue on my arms. We're gonna make it like he's a running man. Okay, kind of like I did for my lady. I gave her a necklace and I colored on her a skirt and bow and then I attached her arms. All right, the next step is to fill my cup with water. You're gonna fill it up. There's kind of like a lip in your cup. You wanna fill it to that, which is almost to the top. You don't want to overflow it, especially if you don't have it in the spot where you want it to go. We don't want to spill water everywhere. All right. And then you just 
Make sure that your tail of your sock or grass head goes in there. Oops, I see that's a little bit up too much. Yep. <laughs> All right. And there is my grass head. So for your sprout house in your kit, you have your pie pan, you have your half toothpicks, you have your sponges, you have your radish seeds, which I've already got them in this tin here, and that's everything. Okay, so first step is to, I would suggest a permanent marker because a the regular markers don't always want to, sometimes the they get absorbed in the sponge. So we're going to draw our first uh, sponge. So on your sheet, there's diagrams. So the first sponge would be the front of your house. And it's really important that you draw kind of two um, little strips least um, a half inch or a quarter inch off the end of, end of your sponges. If you don't do this, then your um, your roof won't fit correctly. So you can see I've already kind of, these are edges I wanna take off. So then I'm gonna draw it in half from there. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not using, if you, like to be more t meticulous, then by all means, definitely get out a ruler and you can measure exact. Then I'm gonna just angle it off so the top of my roof will go on easier. There's that one. Okay, then the next one I'm gonna do is my, the other side to my house. I'm gonna do the same thing. Taking off a little of the end and then just draw a straight line down the middle. And then your third sponge is one right down the middle. All right, then cut. Front of my house, sides. If you wanna have fun, you can even draw on your door if you want. Do a house or window in the back. Go in front, okay. Next up, please. Please, please be very careful with your toothpicks. Miss Nicole has even had one in her foot, so they can be dangerous. We're gonna start with one, and we're gonna go ahead and poke it through the front part of our house. Okay, see how my fingers are out of the way when I poke the sharp end through? So we need to pay attention to where we're poking and make sure our fingers are clear. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna poke all four on each side of my front and the back of my house. Okay, now I'm gonna have my make sure your bottom signed up so your house isn't wobbly. I'm just gonna measure to make sure my roof's gonna cover it. You know what? Miss Nicole's gonna cut off another half inch off the top. I 
The most important thing is that your bottoms match up so it'll sit in your pie pan flat. Now the other end. Okay, and there is my house. I'm going to set it aside. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure my house, my roof fits. Perfect. I'm excited. All right, then go ahead and poke your toothpicks into your roof. Never hurts to double check yourself in any science experiment or project you work on. Got our toothpicks inserted. I'm gonna pour just so it covers the bottom of my pie tin and I'm going to have my roof Soak up some water. When it's good and wet, I'm going to put it right into my feet. Rub them around, get as many on there as I can. See? It's covered. I'm going to set that down. Be very careful. I'm going to move all my seeds back together so that way I get a nice coverage like I did for my first one. Okay, now the second one. Make sure that you're putting it with the pointed side up into the water. So we're making sure that we get the water soaked on the right side of the sponge. Go ahead and put your house into your dish that had the water. And then go ahead and poke. You're going to have some seeds fall off, which is okay. You see the front of my house? Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and add water. Go ahead and start with an inch. If you do it this way from the top, make sure you go really slow because if you go fast, you will wash off all your seeds. But the most important thing is that you want to make sure you see that your sponges have entirely soaked up the water. Because if your other sponges aren't wet, they're not gonna do the capillary action and bring the water all the way up to the seeds where it needs to be. So this one is very most important that you never let your sponges dry out. If they dry out, then your seeds will not sprout. So this is kind of like hydroponics, which is a type of agriculture in the way that um, you're growing plants without soil. You're growing it with a nutrient-based solution, which since we're just sprouting these, we are not gonna have to worry about any nutrients added. So, but there is your sprout house. Have fun with your grass head. Um, since we are in winter time, I wanna give you a growing tip. Um, you'll want to put your sprout house and grass head in a bright, sunny window. Since we live in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun kind of shifts to the south. So, but depending on where you live, whatever window gets the most amount of sun is where you want to put it. And then you don't want it to get below 50 degrees. So if your windowsill is a cold one, it may not sprout for that reason too. So just remember, warm, bright, sunny, keep moist for this project. I hope you have fun.
Bye friends. topic that I wanted to make sure you guys had some reading material um, to go with it. I always want to start with field guide. These are not vegetable field guides. These are wildflowers and trees, but this is a lot of things that are around you and it's always fun to know your plants and these are good books to start because um, these are plants that are just outside. Um, these are Some of these books are found in our adult area but there are kids books that are vegetable or gardening related too. So there's two section, sections for you guys to look at at the library for great reading material. This one is Vegetable Garden Container Bible. Bible meaning it's a great book to rely on that gives you good information. Um, small Space Vegetable Gardening. The Edible Container Gardening. If you can see that there's a theme. It's always fun to start um, learning about plants in a smaller environment or a smaller area because it's easier to control and to kind of figure out what your problem areas are. And gardening for children. All right, I hope you guys have fun and learn more about plants. Bye friends.